did you gamble on? I gambled on uh, sports. And I will tell you this. You should never bet football because the ball ain't round. I keep telling people this. And so the ball hits and then it does all kinds of crazy things and uh, you don't know. You want to bet on a, a game with a round ball. But anyways, I quit. I don't know why I'm even saying this. <laughs> but I did go broke twice. And uh, I must say that it was a very cleansing feeling in a way. Cleansing? Yeah. Well, when you went broke, you had to make money again, right? Yeah. Because you had to go broke twice. Yeah, that's true. Why did true. you go back to gambling <laughs> after you made money, knowing that you went broke? Well, it's that's like insanity. A, on a grander scale, though, how does uh, uh, Donald Trump lose $900 million? It's because he has the guts to, to make the gamble. You know what I mean? Now, most people, I think, if they got to $3 billion or $4 billion or whatever Mr. Trump is worth, would just sit on it. But uh, he's willing to throw the dice, you know. And what I mean? then also take it off his income tax and not pay income tax when he makes it. Yeah, but that's illegal. <laughs> Oblivious One tweets, I would love hearing anything about Norm's amazing gambling run in Atlantic City. Oh, yes, that's what happened. A friend of mine is very smart, said, I've been very lucky with gambling. I've never won. And uh, it was a very profound thing, you know what I mean? Because if you never win, you don't get hooked. But I had a big win. <laughs> So uh, I, I was a casual gambler, you know, would go and bet $25 on uh, blackjack. I hit a craps table, I went on a gigantic run, won, you know, six figures. And ever since then, you can't go back. You know what I mean? If you win that much money, you can't go back to $25 you mean, bets. Over, over 100000 yeah. yeah. Just, just, Just over. Just Did so you get a little nervous walking out with the cash? I was afraid. I didn't know you were allowed to win that much. So at the craps table, I kept putting the chips in my pocket, you know, because this guy was rolling for I don't know the game. And I, I put money down, and then the, uh, I only had $100. I just put it down, and then I won. And the guy said, you want to press it? And then I didn't want to look stupid. I go, what do you think? <laughs> so the guy pressed it. He pressed every bet. And anyways, all of a sudden, they were just handing me huge amounts of money. Yeah, I got scared. I started pocketing it. And then I remember at the end, I go, man, I must have won $15,000. And the guy goes, you want a hell of a lot more than that, fella. <laughs> and I went, and it was Atlantic City. They don't escort you to your car oh, or anything Vegas like that. They do. <laughs> yeah, you just drive into hell. When you get out of that casino, <laughs> just every sign says, we'll buy your, go you know, your gold from your teeth. You know, it, was, it was horrible. <laughs> Now, uh, you know, I, I guess I've known you uh, for, I don't know, for a little while now, yeah. and you've come on the show a bunch of times, and we've gotten, you know, and I was kind of surprised because someone told me that, that uh, Norm MacDonald, you, uh, has gotten kind of, you know, superstitious, and I thought, that's yeah. odd, because I, I don't think of you as that kind of person. I never was. I was always a doubting Thomas. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. I was always a, I was always a doubting, I was going to say Fred for some reason. <laughs> Uh -huh. I, was, I was always a doubting Thomas, you know? Yeah. I was always, nah, that stuff, that's not true. That's a load of stuff, you know? <laughs> so, but then I had this thing, you wouldn't believe it. You uh -huh. know, I opened my eyes and made a believer out of me. What happened was I had a, a dream, and it was like the number seven in my dream. A giant number seven. Wow. It was the most vivid dream I ever had. Mm -hmm. So I wake up from the dream, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. So I wake up from the dream, from this number seven. I look over at my clock, seven o'clock. Right? Wow. So I get up. It's not that coincidental. No, I'm just sort of going along with yeah. you. Yeah. So then I uh, go out and I decide, hey, why don't I take a cab, you know? So I get in the cab. <laughs> and it's cab number seven, I notice, when I'm in the cab. Now I'm starting to get a little freaked out, you know? And uh, so I get, say, hey, take me to the track. I enjoy uh, playing the ponies. You know sure, I, mean? I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I like going down there, Cohen. I like uh, visiting my money. <laughs> so, no, uh, you crack me up. No. <laughs> my uncle used to say that. So uh, I go to the track, you know, and I, I say, okay, what do I owe you there, fella? He says, $7.77. Oh. I said, good Lord. I said, I thought it was like 40 cents. Of, uh, anyways. So I go, here you go. I pay him. You know, I gave him like eight bucks. You know? Right. So uh, <laughs> I get, I walk through, like, uh, I walk through gate seven, you know, yeah. went up to ticket number, window number seven there at the, the horse place, you know, <laughs> and I, I look up, they uh -huh. have the, the form there, you know, the racing form shows you all the races. So I look and I see in the seventh race, there's a horse called Lucky Seven and he pays 77 to one. You know? No. So I say, to hell with this. I say, I'm going to pull out all my money. I pull out all my money. I had like 700 bucks. Wow. Pull it out. 
I said, put this all on Lucky 7th and a 7th, you know? I go watch the, the, the race. Damn if he didn't come in 7th. That's incredible! What an amazing story. Well, <laughs> that's an incredible story, Norm. Uh, I'm sorry about cursing. I forgot that. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, that We're on cable by now, I think. Uh, you, you, do you still gamble? I, uh, somebody told me that you... Did you... Or did we know that... Uh, yeah, I used to gamble. Uh, you don't gamble anymore? No, I gamble anymore. Was man. it a problem? Did it get to be a problem? Yeah, it got to be a problem, yeah. man. And then I tried to do it uh, smart. Every time I tried to do it smart, a bad thing would happen, like you know? A, what do you mean? Well, one time I was trying to uh, handicap baseball, you know, which you can actually beat baseball if you handicap it properly. So I was trying to handicap, and I figured it out for like three hours, and I went down to the book and Mirage, the sports book, went up to the fella, you know, and there was a guy beside me, a big fat guy, you know, with a, with a, and, and he was dressed like real rich, you know, and he, he opened a big attache case filled with $10,000 chips, pulls out like 750000 and he's going to bet on this uh, boxer, boxer, you know, a fighter. You know? Yeah. And it was a four to one underdog. So I said, I'm not going to bet my baseball bet. I'll just bet on this four to one underdog, you know? He must know yeah, because this guy must know something. He's probably in the mafia. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I go and watch, I watch the boxing match, Dave. And the guy, my guy that I bet on, gets knocked out in 25 seconds. Oh, oh, no. Whoa. Yeah. So I go back to the book. I go, well, that guy from the Mafia, what? He goes, that guy's not from the Mafia. He goes, that's old long shot Louie. He goes, he's a rich guy, he loves long shots. <laughs> Well, there's just, there's just no winning, is there? No, there's no winning. Nobody, Nobody ever wins. wins. Ever. <laughs> hey, so look, I, was at the, I was at the Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I almost made a bet. Yeah. I almost made a bet that it would go the distance in Mosley's favor. Almost. Wow. But I was a little bit afraid. Tell everybody what, what, your, bet, what your bet was, Norm. <laughs> I bet Pacquiao to win. 25000 to win 3000 <laughs> Wait a minute. What? <laughs> How is, that, how is that possible? You, right. put, you put down $25,000. Yeah. Maybe lose $25,000 to win three. Yeah. But I won three. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was it, was it that it would a knockout or what, what was the actual no, bet? it was just that he would win. But I, I got scared because like, I was so happy when Mosley went down. And then all of a sudden he got up. <laughs> And then I was scared, because, you know, one punch can end it at any moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, no, that's the most money I ever put on a fight. And also, I don't know nothing about boxing. <laughs> How did you, what did you go, by the commercials, or is karaoke singing, or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How did you pick back you? Well, usually I, uh, I kind of went against my instincts on this one, because usually I pick the bigger, blacker guy. <laughs> But in this instance, uh, you know, I met him, Pacquiao, and he seemed, uh, he seemed unbeatable. Yeah, he, he you know, is. You know, pound for pound. Yeah. Unfortunately, the other guy weighed more pounds. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever lost, have you ever been devastated and lost like a big bet? Uh, I've lost everything I own three times. <laughs> like, uh, tapped out? Yeah, 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 yeah. That happened to me three times. But since, I, I've gotten control of it since. <laughs> But one time, man, I was... See, actually, after you lose everything, you, sometimes you kind of feel good. It's odd. But you feel, like, you feel like clean. You go, hey, man, I feel all right, you know? But... Uh, My car's gone. <laughs> My house is gone. I'm, you know what? I'm all right. I feel... I, I, I'm cleansed. I don't have my watch anymore. <laughs> yeah. But one time, I had nothing left. And I went up to my room, and I, I was like... I, I walked by the Coca-Cola machine. I love Coca-Cola. You know? Yeah. So I said, I'm going to have a frosty Coca-Cola, you know? But I only had 65 cents to my name, right? And it costs a dollar. So I go, I get this, hatch this plan. I'll go down to the nickel slots, and I'll make myself a dollar. <laughs> so I go down there with my 65 cents. I'm putting in nickels. And it took an hour and a half, and I get up to, I get up to 95 cents eight times. <laughs> and I never broke a dollar. And then later, I thought, I think they would have given me a free drink. <laughs> yeah, right. All you got to do is, you know, cocktails. Yeah. yeah. That's, by the way, how you know you're not good in uh, gambling. When you have a gambling problem is when the guys start giving you things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because uh, pit boss, when you first go, you're, you're like, hey, man, the pit boss just offered me some free meat. 
<laughs> you know? That's a nice fella, you know? And, uh, and then you realize he's only doing it because you're a sap, but man, <laughs> I, I would go in, I'd bet so much money at the end of the thing, the guy would be like, you want some meat, anything to keep me in the casino? Hey, uh, some beef, hey, uh, want to have sex with my wife, anything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> No, you have you you gamble a lot. You go to these. Someone told me something amazing about you that the movie Rounders, which is about underground gambling, mm. was based on your life. Oh, no. Is that true? <laughs> that they followed no. you around? No, I didn't you. say that. I, I did. I got that. that information. I know that guy who wrote it likes Norm. Is that my Wikipedia? You know Brian Koppelman likes you, the and writer. That of he that. followed Norm around, and Norm would go play poker at a lot of in these the underground the couples in yeah. the middle of the night. That's true. And it's actually a documentary on Norm's life. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. But I would go to the same club where it was, uh, where they did rounders, and this was before rounders. Yeah. Why would you play poker? When I was a kid, I played backgammon. I was good at backgammon. But why would you play poker at an underground club when you could go to, let's say, Vegas or Atlantic City and play poker? Why would you go underground? What is the appeal? I was appeal? only a little kid. I was just a kid. Oh, you were a kid. And one is, you... well, no, but one is two blocks away in Manhattan, yeah. you oh, know. I see. <laughs> Me and Norm went to a week. The second time I was on your show ever with Norm, we were in one of those clubs all night long. Right. And we came right from the club. Did you get your clock clean? Did you lose a lot of money? I lost all my money immediately. So I had to start I had to start shooting pool. There was just all gambling going on. So I shot I shot eight ball until like six thirty in the morning with a guy and I lost eight hundred bucks doing that. Right. And then Norm I lost about two grand at the tables. Norm played poker. And then uh, we did Norm win. We just hey, one time a, tr a guy tried to hustle me at pool. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good at pool? <laughs> Norm's no. good at pool. No, I'm not I mean, right. you're, you're, no, you're, no, not very good. But it's just we're just playing like bar pool, like we're drunk. We're out drunks. This is when I was young, you know. But you play for a lot of money. No, no, no. This is what I had no money. Yeah, okay. So I'm playing this fucking. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you're okay. okay. When well, I'm playing this fucking pool hall, and uh, and. Uh, this uh, <clears throat> big, giant black guy. It doesn't matter what color he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it helps the story. Giant black like guy. Like Forrest Whitaker in The right. Color yeah. of Money. In The Color of Money, yeah. So he comes, no, but he's dressed like he has all this stuff, and he has two girls with him, you know, and I'm all drunk. I'm like an idiot, you know, with my friends playing pool. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, I'm next, you know, so he puts his, like, fucking four quarters now. Yeah. And uh, so then he goes, uh, here, let's play. So the guy, he has his own stick, you know. Oh, boy, you're in for trouble. Yeah. Then. So we're playing, and uh, he's missing by only, like, a millimeter every time, <laughs> really? you know. But I win, like, I win. I beat him e handily, but, like, wow. he's the worst hustler of ever, right? <laughs> so we're, we play for a dollar. So then he goes, now we're playing. He goes, he goes, now we're playing for $100. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, it goes up to 100 from one, and I just beat him every fucking... Yeah, so I go, no, I'm not... What? <laughs> go, I'm not playing. I'm taking my $4 and going drunk, home. you know. I go, I'm ahead a dollar. I was kind of an idiot. You know? yeah. I go, I'm ahead a dollar, you know. I'm not playing you anymore. Ah! And so the guy goes, oh, he's all mad. So uh, then another guy played, and then uh, stupidly I gave the other my friend advice, and then the, the big giant guy hit me with the cue across my oh, head. Wow. And I looked up, and the cue stick was right in my head, and he goes, I break people's bones for a living, motherfucker. What? Oh, whoa, you're kidding me. Yeah, that was he sounds story. like Football Williams, that guy. That way, I was like, that. Oh. Norm, so that was my story about my Norm, pool hustling I, days. I, you should keep that one to yourself, the <laughs> pool hustling story. But, but, but Norm, <laughs> shouldn't tell that on radio. Yeah. Yeah. But Norm, I don't understand something. <laughs> You go to these underground clubs and you play these cards, and it's a lot of money. You're talking about a couple of uh, grand, right? You're talking about maybe I lost 20, a couple grand. of grand. You're talking it's 20? got 160 million. <laughs> like, you're talking about it's like when no, Johnny but... Carson tried to be like, "What's a loaf of bread cost nowadays?" Is this crazy? No, I'm saying I I got, I got news for you. It's like would, two grand. It's like two grand. I wouldn't gamble a hundred dollars. Yeah, but right? he's not a gambler. I've seen how he get mad over it. ten bucks. I yeah. don't like to gamble. Yeah. I find yeah. it uh, insulting. That, in other words, yeah. I find making money, you know, is a very especially where I grew up is a very hard thing for a lot of people, and it's a it's a tough thing. And to just piss it away in a gambling situation. My old man felt the same way. Offends way. me. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, my father would think that too. Right, but you play for big bucks, right? I mean, no, you're 20, 30 grand right. a clip, I'm right? Trying my best. Well, you don't remember what happened with this place when we came, when we got we were there all night. Yeah, tell the truth. And we, well, we were there. I don't know what Norm played that night. He was playing all night. I lost two thousand myself, you know. Right. But uh, so 
Uh, we came here and Norm accidentally said the name of the place. Oh, fuck. Do you yeah, remember that, Norm? Yes, because the guy did not care for that. A guy called up. A guy called up and said, yeah, listen, Norm, uh, like later in the afternoon, he said, listen, that. we appreciate you coming here, but uh, we don't we don't have a fucking publicity department. <laughs> yeah, we're not looking for They're customers. They're not looking for that. Can I say uh, the name of the place? It's not the there anymore. No, uh, it's not there anymore. The Mayfair. It's, it's not there anymore. Closed. No, it's a famous place now. Yeah. The Mayfair. Yeah. Well, but, Norm, I think Howard's right in the sense that that guy, Koppelman, who, write, who wrote Rounders, he's a good guy. I know him, too. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he likes you. No, and he was there all the time. Around. Yeah, he played at the where. But well, right, why couldn't it be his own story if he was there? I might be involved. I knew a guy that was in the movie Joey Bagels. Yeah, they, they, I, what I hear is that it was based on you. For, yeah. uh, legitimately, yeah. He would yeah. watch Norm while he played. I, tell, I stumped a fucking psychiatrist once. <laughs> <laughs> I said to the guy, because I was fucking gambling all the time, shit, right? I had a gambling addiction. Uh, I'm over it now, but shit, but he said... I uh, bet you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Shut he up, almost Chip. lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chip. <laughs> you haven't met Chip. Uh, yes, yeah, Chip. Chipperson is very funny. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, the psychiatrist, he said, you're using gambling, you're using, you know, you're, you're fixating on gambling in order to escape your real thoughts. You know? mm -hmm. And I said to him, isn't that why you do everything in life? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I stumped him. He had no answer. He was yeah. like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he recovered and tried to make it. But isn't that why you do everything? Yes. So you're not sitting at home just thinking, thinking about what, what was what's your, uh, really going to happen to us? <laughs> where, where it all ends? <laughs> what was your gambling poison there? What did you, what did you enjoy? Sports, 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 sports was the worst. gambling. Yeah, sports was the worst. You were a casino guy, or no? I did everything, but yeah. sports was uh, sports was the one that uh, you think you can pick. Ah. You know what I mean? You delude yourself into going. You've sports gambled. I'm I've sure. never sports gambled. Oh, really? I, I'm, In your but life? I, 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 well, maybe once I got that slip and I knew nothing and oh. I filled shit out and some guy. I could have won. About you? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. not not oh, like you. Been into it, I've right? heard the norm stories. I'm Fuck blackjack that. guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I play oh, blackjack. Oh, was, oh, I love what was your biggest loss? Do you talk about it? <laughs> nah. Not really, huh? Nah. I don't blame you. A lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah, you're over it though. I did a stupid thing one time. <laughs> okay, he's ready to talk. <laughs> you know, this was my big. Uh, this was my big statement. I threw uh, uh, over at uh, Atlantic City uh, hmm. on the boardwalk. I threw sixty thousand into the ocean. What? No way. Yeah, to quit. That was my thing. I, I'm going to quit. Why did you just quit and keep the sixty? <laughs> It was it was like it was supposed to be like uh, I felt like I was in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a symbolic wow. kind of a thing. Yeah, like, yeah, was yeah. it money or chips? No, it was What's money. That? It was money. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> Chip. <laughs> I said chips, and he goes, "What's that?" Wait, so you threw sixty grand because you had a moment where you're like, "This is cleansing. This is yeah, like this is, to yeah. the ocean." The I committed way, the same way a drug addict would throw his drugs. Sure. Into right. the ocean. Right. Right. How long after it left your hand did you statement. regret it? <laughs> I regretted it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would have thrown the fucking dealer into the. That's how I would get yeah. over it. I'm all surprised that idiots. I'm surprised that people like dealers don't get. Uh, killed killed yeah. it, it really is amazing because they can piss you off i've seen dealers do things where it's like and and oh, where in, in succession where you're like all right look i'm finally getting good cards i'm pulling 20s out here and the dealer is consistently showing a dumb four or a three and that seven eight pops up oh, yeah, and yeah, here's yeah. the ever-present picture card or anytime like they're dealing around and i'm like okay king and now they go around yeah. for the second one four and, but whenever you see them showing a, a picture card, that fa that uh, down card, it's always a face card oh, or an ace. Every time. Insurance. Is that insurance. your game? That's your game. Yeah, nice. I have I have yelled. I've gotten to the point where the, the guy, the guy, my security guy, Keith, the cop, had had to get a pillow and bring it down because I was turning around and punching him in the shoulder so hard when they would pull this bullshit on me. And I was yelling where, like, the floor guy would come over and go, Hey, Mr. Comey, you're going to have to keep it down. Because I'm just like, Yeah, you motherfucker! Fuck! So the pillow... Do other people recognize you? Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's humiliating. And, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I would also use the pillow to bury my face and go like, You son of a fucking bitch! And I have to tell the dealer, Look, it's not you personally. Yeah. It's the cards. You I'm yelling. You reacted to an ace of diamonds the way most people react to a rape. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming into a pillow. 
Well, I fucking had an 11 and I doubled down and you're throwing fucking you got almost 30 grand out there and they give you an ace. Dude, I never get you, an ace. It's funny when you see a famous guy. There used to be a guy, a weatherman here in New York named Spencer Christian. Oh, yeah, oh sure. Yeah. Spencer ABC, Christen. uh, Good Morning America. I think he also wrote, but I think he was a smart guy or some shit. But anyways, I seen him in the casino at the, at the Trump, you know, and you can spot a compulsive gambler. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. His eyes are, and he's on a bad roll. It's that kind of <laughs> roll where you keep leaving the tables and they're like, better luck next time. <laughs> you know, that kind of shit. And he's just the next table and he's putting money, everything's losing, you know, and he's just saying, anyway, this big fat fucking family from Ohio. They go, there's that weather, man. Oh, know? no, you don't want so to talk to anybody. No. So they're taking a picture and he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and deal. Oh, man. Oh, exactly. I, I hear you. And the other fucking horrible thing is you like lose money. You walk away from a table, a fucking craps table, right? Down like 35 fucking thousand. And as you walk away, some motherfucker goes, yeah, it's like two bucks for us you know what's the most you ever bet on a sporting event oh my god uh i, I, I don't know probably a hundred thousand or something like that wait what game it was actually the worst beat of the century <laughs> it was it was pretty bad the mets uh the, the Met, it was i had the over <laughs> which i think was seven and uh the, the, no, the, no, six and a half. I'm sorry, it was six and a half, and uh, the game was tied two-two, and uh, uh, I think Ventura was the batter. Wait, the Grand Slam? Yeah, the the, the one the one run Grand Slam. <laughs> you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was tragic. <laughs> and I remember Costas at the time because it was just bedlam, and he goes, "I don't think those." Those count, you know, and I'm like, oh, Costas must have. He, he had the under. <laughs> he must have. <laughs> he was pretty happy about it. But did you uh, did you bet with Artie Lang when you would hang out with him? Yeah, yeah. Artie and I bet a lot together. It was uh, we were uh, we, we enabled each other. If you people often say that if you play a round of golf with somebody, you can find everything you need to know about a guy. Uh, if I said, could you find out that same amount of information as to how competitive, does he cheat, uh, fun guy, does he have beers, smoke cigars? Could you have that same kind of feeling about a guy playing poker? Uh, well, not as much because, uh, you know, lying is part of the game and so forth. Golf, I completely agree with you. You can find I play out. golf, I, I count every stroke. And it maddens me, you know, uh, when people don't. What got you? I read a thing in Golf Digest <laughs> once. Actually, it was uh, it was um, Jack Nicholas, yeah. Gerald Ford, and uh, Jimmy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Clinton were playing a round of golf, and it was uh, it was really funny because uh, uh, Clinton, uh, allegedly a scratch player, just cheated the whole time. And so, you know, he'd be in the woods and everything, and he was one of these guys who'd get up on the on the green and then start counting after, you know, give me a birdie, or, you know, give me a bogey or whatever. And the other guys were just fuming about it, you know. I did not cheat. <laughs> I did not. What was the biggest bet you ever made? Oh, God almighty. Um, I don't know. I, I One time, I, the, I mean, the most I lost in one night where, because three times I've lost everything that I've ever had. How do you do that? I mean, not, not immorally, but I mean, like, how, how do you physically lo- do it? Well, yeah. I mean, like, you know, you, you like you make one more. Like, what is the process of that? What's the evolution? It's it, funny it, because it's a, a the only time I ever went to a psychiatrist, he said, like, I was like, because it was for gambling. I was yeah. like, how the fuck do I get out of this? And he's like, oh, you gamble to avoid uh, life, you know, and I'm like, but my, my my thing was, well, isn't that why you do f- everything in life is to <laughs> fucking avoid us? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's I too painful. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why, why do you? So I said, uh, but oh, it's painful to think about, but because uh, um, because now it would be nice to have the money, but um, you just lose it by uh, by it's just like any escape, I guess. 
because I was never a drug or alcohol guy. But like when I watch a game and I have a bunch of money on it, then I can understand what's going on. Nothing's ambivalent or anything about it, you know. And there's and there's stakes. There's stakes. You know exactly the rules. Yeah. You're completely involved, and you're completely escaped from your life. Yeah. Of the of the real. Yeah. The real. Um, the real fear. My biggest problem is ruminating about death. If I could get over that somehow. And you do that regularly? I try to. I read fucking books about it and shit. So, like, you still haven't walked me through losing everything. <laughs> well, um, how you do it? Physically? Yeah, because, like, I mean, because, like, you know, you've got a house, you've, you had a lot of money saved up, and, 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 and then, like, so you make one bet, and then you realize you're, you're about to lose everything. Do you make phone calls to people saying, like, I just need a little more? I mean... Well, you know, you kind of at the end of it, you know, uh, it's happening. It's I guess it's like I've I've never had substance abuse problems, but I guess it's like people that um, know they're going to hit bottom, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of want it. Yeah, because it does get it, it, it's exhausting. Yeah, to be obsessed with something. Right. So um, you are, I guess, um, trying to do it, trying to finish it off. Right. Finally, because right. if you if you have four hundred fifty thousand in the bank, yeah. whatever the fuck it was. And then you lose four hundred thousand. You go fuck it. I don't want to fucking have fifty thousand. Right. <laughs> to remind me that I don't want money to remind me that I had I more money. <laughs> so that's how you do it. So that's how you do it. Yeah. Biggest risk you've ever taken? Uh, I, I think it was with gambling. I, I bet everything I had. Once. What was the most you ever bet on an event? Uh, four hundred thousand dollars. Who was it on? Atlanta Falcons against the uh, Denver Broncos, 1990. Who was favored? <laughs> the uh, Broncos were favored by uh, uh, something like 12 and a half points. You took I, the lamp. I took the money line that paid Ooh. three to one or something like that and lost. Mm. Do you get depressed when you lost? Oh, yeah, you can <laughs> fall into depression. That's why I quit gambling, really. Uh, there's too much anxiety and too much depression, and so, all for nothing at the Something end. you wish you were better at. 